Michael Cummings here with BlazePod. Welcome to our Logic series. Creating a custom BlazePod activity is easy. The first step is choosing the foundation, or as we call it, the light logic. This is the program type that you will choose to best meet your needs. In this series, you'll learn all about each light logic and the reason why you would choose each one. Today, we're going to dive into a very special light logic, home base. How does the home base logic work? This logic chooses one pod to be the home base pod and the other pods as surrounding pods. After a surrounding pod is tapped out, the home base pod will light up again. After the home base pod is tapped out, the next surrounding pod will light up at random. Go ahead and select choose and let's get started. You can add several stations and each station will have the same activity running in parallel. So if you have six pods and the activity uses only three pods, you can effectively run two stations of that same activity, each running at the same time. The number of pods is the amount of pods you'll be using for the activity per each station. After selecting the number of pods we want to use, you'll notice the indication lights flash to help you set up your activity. The home base pod will flash first, followed by the surrounding pods. If you select multiple colors per player, the pods will indicate as such. If you select multiple stations, station one will light up first with the correct indication lights, followed by station two and so on, with a brief pause before returning back to station one. Below the pods per station, you'll find the colors per player setting. Selecting more than one color per player advances the activity and will enhance each player's potential for improving their cognitive skills. Adding multiple colors allows you to designate a function that you want the player to perform when they see that particular color. This can really benefit active memory and reflexive cognition or the ability to be a more flexible thinker. Seeing the visual cue of each pod light up may help improve your spatial awareness and reaction time. The more you use BlazePod, the faster and more efficiently you may be able to respond to visual cues in all scenarios. Reaction time is a three-step process. Your brain needs to first recognize a stimulus. In this case, it's a visual light stimulus. Then it has to process what its next move is going to be. After the processing happens, the body then reacts in response to what the brain chose as the correct course of action. The faster you can recognize, process, and respond accurately is the path towards peak human performance. Next up, choose the player that will be doing the activity by tapping on the name. Make sure to add each new player to your list so you can save all the results individually to analyze improvement. You can also choose teams if you have more than one player performing a single player activity, like this team basketball drill. Another cool feature is that you can change each player's color to their favorite one. Now swipe or tap next and move on to the pod light rules screen. Here you'll see that you can change the lights out and light delay settings for the home base pod and surrounding pods separately. I'll talk about them for both the home base and surrounding pods together to save time. Lights out is basically choosing the way in which the pod's light is turned off. Is it with a physical tap or with a timer? With a timer, the pod will not respond to a hit. The light will only go out after the time that is preset. This is great if you wanna use the pods as visual cues and are not worried about the data captured by each hit. You can also choose a combination of whatever happens first. If the pod is tapped out before the time runs out, it registers a hit. Otherwise, it registers a miss hit. I like to use this function when trying to get someone to increase their intensity and move faster. This creates a sense of urgency and pressure to respond within a certain time frame. It's a great way to intensify an activity. And now to the final setting on this screen, the light delay time. The time between a pod's light going out and when the next pod lights up. In many cases, you'll want the next pod to light up immediately, in which case you'll choose the none option. You can add a fixed delay time if you want the participant to have time to return to an ideal starting position. The random light delay option is great because you can simply choose a range from zero seconds to 10 seconds or anything in between. 
and the app will randomly choose a time between the minimum and maximum times that you set. This option is also great for helping players wait and think before they go and make the right decision as quickly as possible. Or if you want to work on a player's anticipation or response time, this option gives you a true reaction time. Here's an example of why you would use different settings for the home base and surrounding pods. See what happens when you use hit or timeout as your surrounding pods lights out setting. It adds a sense of urgency and encourages quick decision making. To give the user time to reset and return to their start position, select the hit option for the home base pod. Now let's swipe or tap next to finalize the activity. You have three options to choose how or when the activity ends. Do you want the activity to end after a certain length of time or maybe after a certain number of successful hits? Or whichever comes first, trying to complete a certain amount of hits before the time runs out. Sounds simple, but carefully consider what works best for the goals and intent of your activity. And finally, cycles. You can think of cycles like sets in weight training. Do you want the activity to run a number of times automatically with a rest period between the cycles? This option is great if you're running a drill for a number of sets before moving on to the next one. Once your activity is set, it's ready to use. You can start immediately. You can manually start the activity from the app or select start on hit. The start on hit option is great if you want to place the device down and get into position, or if you're training a group and want the drill to run self-sufficiently. If you have the pro membership, you can save the activity and use it over and over again, or share it. Now go get creative and have fun designing your own activities. Enjoy. Enjoy.